Hi there, Lindsay here, the frugal crafter. I'm waving with my left hand for some reason. I feel like the queen. Hello, how are we all doing? This is Sat Chat. For those of you who are new here, Sat Chat is not a tutorial. It is not even necessarily anything artsy or craftsy. It's basically just the chit chat, sit down, kick off the weekend with my community here on YouTube. So um, if you want to hang out and chit chat with no guarantees of anything to <laughs> to approve your artistic ability for the next half an hour, you are welcome. But if you're looking for tutorials, then check out some of my other videos because this is just, you know, it's just a sat chat. It's a sat chat. Uh, I hope you've been having a really good week. This has been a nice week. The weather's starting to get a little bit warmer and um, my girls have been getting ready for their fall, their spring musical, which will be their last their last performance, their last play, musical, at at school before they're off to college, so I'm kind of excited. Um, I uh, started a new coffee routine this week. My coffee maker has been kind of making, it's, it's been, it's been iffy for the last, like, the last few months. It started with, like, this little piece not, like, sitting right, does, I guess the water comes up out of the, out of the, um, the water vessel part, and then it goes through this little, this little pipe and then it like it falls almost like a rain a rain like a shower head like one of those rain shower heads it's like a circle with all these little holes the water comes out and it kind of drizzles gently it gently rains upon my coffee grinds to create a splendid cup of coffee so the gentle little rains uh the little thing that makes a little gentle rains you could take it off to wash it so it you just twist it and it comes out and you wash it i've noticed it was falling off of the part that it was hooked to and so um there somehow something cracked in there i don't know if it was heat or what because it's a coffee maker it's meant to be hot but anyways the plastic cracked and so then like uh, about a week ago i, I put a rubber band around it because it kept falling off but it was making really crazy loud noises when it you think I was making like um espresso it was like just like steam and hissing and making all this this noise I'm like this can't be good and I do not want to be caught unaware when the coffee maker finally bites the bullet and then because I only have coffee first thing in the morning I can't handle caffeine like I used to so I have my coffee in the morning and that's it and a lot of times I set up the coffee maker the night before so I just have to stumble downstairs hit a button and then you know in 10 minutes I have coffee so I decided that uh, before I would find a new plan before my coffee maker bit the big one. And I um, I remember my sister had given me a French press uh, either last Christmas or the Christmas before um, with a bunch of coffee and things like that because she knew I love coffee. And I've used a French press in the past. And that's, if you don't know, it's just like a little uh, glass carafe kind of. And it has this... Um, this, uh, the top, and it has this plunger in it that has a screen on it. So what you do is you put your coffee in the glass canister, you boil some water, which I have an electric kettle, so it's perfect. Um, so you boil, so you boil some water, you put the coffee grinds in the, uh, right in the pitcher, you pour the water over them, and then you let it sit for like five minutes, four or five minutes, and then you put the you uh, plunge the thing down and it strains the coffee. So all the grain, the grinds are like under the plunger and then you get nice delicious coffee up above. It's worked great. Uh, the only downside is that um, my daughter also drinks coffee. So when I would make a pot of coffee, I would take mine and then I would pour the leftover in a, like a mason jar and stick it in the fridge for her because she likes iced coffee. So I did have to do like an extra batch so I could have some in the fridge for her to do iced coffee. But other than that, I mean, I really like the coffee. I think the coffee is tastier. I don't th seem to need as much coffee grinds to make this coffee as strong as I like and it's nice and mellow it has just a great flavor and uh I feel like it's robust it's strong but it's not like acidic or and it doesn't sit on a hot burner so it doesn't get you know that hot coffee the over like heated coffee metallic yuckiness so so I'm pretty I'm pretty 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 thrilled with that but the morning I got up to go downstairs and start my new coffee journey I see this pile of orange t-shirts on the kitchen table with a post-it note that says this is mom can you please uh can you please put the words inmate on the back of each of these t-shirts and numbers on the front and can you drop them off at school today <laughs> and I'm like I've got a whole new coffee routine. I cannot be dealing with this and getting it to school at the same day. But I did do the uh, I did do the t-shirts, and uh, you know I I sent her a picture. I'm like these aren't even dry. They're not coming to school. You can bring them in tomorrow because they just they just were just rehearsing. They weren't doing the like a full dress rehearsal or anything, and. Um, they came out so good. I have not used my silk screen in like years. And it's funny, silk screen is one of those things, like I used it a ton when I had my studio downtown. I would silk screen uh, posters for my art shows. I would just use it all the time. I love doing silk screening. And then, um, 
And then I closed the studio and I really didn't have much use for it. It kind of was a big ordeal and I never used it. And I gave it to a friend of mine who wanted to make some concert t-shirts and I immediately regretted it. And so like not too long after that, I went to AC Moore with a like 40% off coupon and I bought another Speedball uh, silk screen. I never liked it as much as that first one. I think the first one, I think was better than the one I have now. But anyway, um, I've used it a few times to do kids t-shirts and um, for like birthday parties and party favors and stuff like that. So it was fun to get that down and to silk screen the back of the, the prison uh, costumes and they looked great. And then I actually used my old Making Memories foam stamps, like the stencil font, to stamp like the prison inmate numbers on the front. And it looks so cute. And I just always feel so good when I get some old, when I get to reuse some old thing that's been in my studio that I've had for so long. It just, it like, you know, helps me justify keeping it and it just feels good to like get those old products using again because you know you bought them because you like them and it's just it's nice to remember that like why you like those products I think anyway uh, so that was fun I don't have a picture to show you but uh, but trust me it was fantastic it looked great uh, I didn't even have a stencil font on my computer because what what I do when I need to make a custom stencil um, I use my old Cricut machine, which is like old, like it's, um, it's the, ex because I have the personal cutter and the expression, the first one, like back from, what is that, 2011? I don't know when they came out. It was, it was quite a while ago. And um, I use Shortcuts a lot software before they like got bullied by Cricut to stop um, making versions that are compatible with Cricut. That's actually why I don't use Cricut, Cricut anymore. I was so disgusted with how they bullied that company. Um, but anyways, I still have that old machine. It still works great. I use the Scal software and it works so good. It's like, it's such awesome software. I think if I was ever gonna get software to use with my um, my brother Scan and Cut, I would I would see if Shortcut Slot's new version is compatible because it's such an easy to use software. I just really like it. But my Scan and Cut, I scan and I cut and that is it. I stamp, I put my thing in there, it cuts it out. I'm good with that. Um, I can do all the designing I want on my old Cricut because I use generic blades, I use generic mats, and I use off-market software. So that is essentially just a plotting, uh, cutting and plotting type, uh, type device and it works fine like that and I don't hook it to the internet, I don't hook it to any of their software, firmware, anywhere because I don't want their paws on my machine. So that is a complete off-market, off-market use of it. But it, it's, it, and the old machines, the first ones that came out that were sold through independent dealers were really good. I think the ones that came out, like they, they got mass produced and sold for dirt cheap from like the big box stores were not as good. They felt lighter. If I pick up a friend's machine, it would be light and just feel flimsy and the blade holders would be like plastic instead of metal. I, I don't know. I think they really cheaped out after a while. But I got one of the old ones and I'm happy with it and uh, I'm certainly not going to upgrade. So, um, so just, just a little brief aside. Uh, so what else? Oh, so speaking of products, I thought I would share a few things that I've picked up lately. A Frug haul, if you will. I don't want to even call this a haul video because it'd be so disappointing for any haul video lovers out there, but I did find a few pretty cool things um, and I'll share them with you. So this was such a surprise. I had gone to Martin's, which if, I've mentioned Martin's before, but if you're not from Maine, you might not know what this store is. It is a store that sells um, like surplus and salvage stuff and they have an amazing fabric department. So whenever we have to do any costumes or anything like that, that's the first place I stop because they have such a huge, gorgeous selection of fabric and the fabric will be from like two to five dollars a yard. It's crazy, even for outdoor fabrics. It's, I, I always go there for my fabrics. So unless there's something I need that's very specific, that they don't happen to have, um, I go there. And I know if you live in a big city, there's probably like garment districts that have really good deals on fabric, but up here we got Joann's and no offense, nothing against Joann's, but they're really expensive and I don't find their fabric really like, you know, the, the basics, anything to write home about. Um, but Martin's has like, um, brand name fabrics, but it'll be like last seasons. I don't care what season my fabric came out. So it works for me. I know it might not work for you if you need the brand newest, like, brand newest, right hot off the presses fabric. <laughs> Maybe Joanne's probably carries that, I don't know. But um, but anyway, so I, I went to Martin's and we were looking for some different costume pieces. But uh, what I found was this little gem, Barrel, very thin dual color pencils, the, the uh, navy and red ones. There were five in a packet, 40 cents for five of these pencils. So I've already sharpened a couple of them. I have one down here. Um, and one upstairs in my in my fun art that where did I do with the one that I sharpened down here? But I already I probably already put it in a in a little uh, drawing kit because I don't see it over there right now. But see, it's like half blue and half red. Um, yeah, barrel very thin. So by color, seven forty eight. 
but it was made in Mexico, so I know it's going to be sometime, because Beryl sold to Sanford, who then sold to Newell Rubbermaid at some point in like the 80s or 90s, so this was kind of interesting that it's, it's a barrel, but it's also made in Mexico, so I thought that's kind of interesting. So they're very hard pencil, but these aren't, haven't been like snappy and breaky like the Prismacolor Very Thins I've had, so um, I think it's just kind of a fun sketching tool, and for 40 cents, 40 cents, I could not resist it. Um, the, I also ordered um, a pack because I was I was down to I'd used up all my um, my Uniball Signo gel pens. Those are my those are my recommended gel pens. If you just want something quick, you can throw in your bag. You can do highlights on a watercolor sketch. Um, I like these Uniball Signo broad gel pens. They are I paid six dollars and I got three on Amazon. I had some other things I needed to order, so I threw that on there to because I had it. I'll keep things that are kind of small in my safe for later shopping cart. So if I'm if I have to order some stuff from close to like the free shipping limit, I'll just grab one of those things. And I was out. I've had uh, I've been using. I'll show you. I've been using um, this Arteza gel pen. This one's been working all right, but I've been hit or miss with those, and I've had really poor luck with the Jelly Roll ones. I know some people love the Jelly Rolls. I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with my climate. Maybe things get frozen or something before they get to the store. I don't know, but I've had really bad luck with the Jelly Rolls. The Artezas, I've been hit or miss on, but this this uh, 0.6 actually is working pretty well. It's a pretty fine tip one, too. But, um, yeah, I, the only consistent white gel pen I found is the Uniball Sigmo. I also use this, I recommend this, the uh, white Posca pens, and then um, once they're used up, I do unscrew the top and refill them with either a white ink, which is, it's okay, it's not as good as the original Posca. My favorite thing to refill it with, but I was out when I needed to refill these, so I put the um, Dr. Peach Martin's white acrylic ink in them. Um, what I really like to use is the is the Chroma Color Blocka White. Chroma color, I think that's what it's called. I buy it on Blick, but I can only buy it in the summer because um, it could freeze and go bad in the winter. I'm also waiting to order some clear gesso, but it's just not warm enough yet. And I did use up my my uh, my pot of clear gesso the other day, so I'm completely out. So that's that's on the list to order when when the weather warms up, or if I happen to be in our supply store and they have it, um, because you just can't ship acrylic products, glues. It's just not a good, you can ship it, they'll sell it to you, they'll send it to you, but it's not a good idea if it's um, if it's below freezing at night because you don't know how long stuff's gonna sit on trucks or if it's gonna be air flighted, if it's gonna be in the unheated cargo bay. Um, you know, this stuff's too expensive to have it freeze and be ruined. Um, also, when I was at Martin's, I walked down the book aisle and this was really surprising. They had the antiquarian sticker book, the Bibliophilia one. And I have the antiquarian one, which I've really been enjoying this one right here. I've been using this a lot on collage and I've got a video coming up. Maybe I'll post it tomorrow because I don't have anything else to go up tomorrow um, of magnolias. And it's a collage and the painting over it. And I use a clear gesso to get the texture using the intense blocks. And then, um, and then I did my painting and then I fussy cut out some of the butterflies and it was really cute. So. Of course, I've just told you all about it, so you probably don't even need to watch it. Now you can use your mind's eye. But if you do want to watch it, maybe, yeah, I guess I will post that tomorrow. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. I've used it on some cards. The stickers do need additional glue on them. That's the only downside. But I think they're so cute. And this was $10.91, so it was $0.91 cents more than I paid, or $0.92 cents more than I paid. No, gosh, I can't add it. It was $0.95 cents more than I paid for this one. But... Um, for the amount that I've enjoyed this one, I think this is well worth it. So I grabbed that. These are regularly about 25. Actually, I think Amazon's had these for about 16. Uh, I think the retail on this is to a $25.99 is the American retail price. $34.99 in Canada. Man, you poor folks in Canada. You can't catch a break. Um, and that had a regular price of $18.19. I don't know where they're getting the regular prices from, but on the back it says... It says uh, $25.99. Uh, but I like those sticker books. It's just a really easy way to get some collage elements. And um, I also like some of those Tim Holtz collage packs. I do, it just takes a little bit of the hunting and gathering out. And, you know, I know I'm lazy. Okay, what can I say? I'm lazy and it's just easier. <laughs> uh, the next thing was actually inspired by a C. Lemon video. She was making these cute little um, booklets. 
Uh, she's a bookbinder on YouTube. She has some really nice uh, projects. And she had this really funky stapler contraption that I was like, oh, that is awesome. And then I looked at the price. It was like 40 bucks. It's like, ah, how often am I going to use that? Um, I put it on my wish list so that <laughs> so that maybe my husband or one of my kids will get it for me for Christmas. Um, but then I started thinking, she started talking about a long reach stapler. And I was like, oh, I always wanted a long reach stapler because sometimes I'll do like... Um, a project and I want to staple something in the middle like maybe I'm working in a journal and my stapler doesn't reach or I'm doing a scrapbook page which albeit doesn't happen all that often or I just want to I just want to staple something in the middle of something else or I want to make a little booklet and I thought you know I bet a long reach stapler would suit me just fine so I went to research them this one had really good reviews and uh, it's gonna do the trick it can go 12 inches so I could have like it could go in the middle of like a 24 inch poster board or watercolor paper or something if I was doing a big collage or something. It takes regular staples. I like things that don't take specialty things. And I also need a regular stapler down here because um, my stapler walks off all the time when I had one down here. I have one up on my desk upstairs and then um, because I need that when I'm doing book work and whatnot and to sort my receipts I staple things together that go together and um, and I don't like that to travel and then I had another one that the kids would always take and borrow and I've never found again it must be in one of their bedrooms so this is so big and bulky that not only will it suit my needs of needing a long reach stapler on those occasions but uh, it's so big that nobody's gonna take it and it does all everything a regular stapler will do too so I get the, uh, the necessity of a regular stapler and then I've got the luxury of being able to staple 12 inches inside of a page. I can make books. I can make a book that is literally 12 inches wide. So I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Will I do that? I don't know. That could be fantasy Lindsay. So who can say? Um, this thing here was um, something I thought would be really useful when I am watercoloring and I'm doing like a large background and it's starting to dry up too fast on me, especially if I'm like outside, like painting on the deck in the summer. So check this out. I don't know if it's going to show up. Hopefully it will. I'll, you know what? I'm going to spray in front of my shirt and I think it will show Look at that. It's like aerosol, but it's not because it's just like, it's just like you know, human powered. And it's just this really light mist. I think these might be made for like doing, um, I think beauty people do them for like misting their face or whatever. So they look dewy. I'm not going to do that. Um, I think they might use it like to put oil in maybe. I'm not sure if it's the same thing like for low fat cooking, but I thought for water misting that would work really well uh, for like doing my, um, like if I'm doing a watercolor background and I need to just keep it wetter longer. Or if I've got acrylic, I don't use acrylics too often, but Sometimes I have them on a Stay What palette, the Golden Open Acrylics, and I might want to leave for a bit. I can just mist it so it won't add too much water. I also think if I'm doing like the um, direct coloring on a rubber stamp with watercolor crayons or markers, I can mist it with this and I wouldn't get a real drippy like watercolor splashy effect. I get a more controlled effect. So this was $6. I figured that it was um, it was worth giving it a shot. Uh, seems to work pretty well. And I'll put links for all these things in the video description if I can find them. Obviously, I'm not going to have those 40 cent pencils, man. That's a one. And they only had one package of it. I don't know where that turned up from. That was probably like in their warehouse. Somebody probably kicked it under a pallet or something like two decades ago and somebody found it. I have no idea. But uh, but that was such a kick. I really <laughs> thought that was kind of fun. Um, I like little, little gadgety things like that. They'll just get me drawing a little bit more. And this other thing was... Um, I honestly, this is one of these I'm voting with my dollar type things because um, I really like the jelly gouache. I find that those palettes are very convenient for me. I have one that sits under there that, um, and unfortunately the, the Artsy company is not making that palette anymore. They did come out with a new 56 one, but um, it's 24 colors. It's not too big. I'll use it for gel printing. I'll use it for painting. I'll use it for any, like doing a background, anytime where I want gouache paint, even adding like opaque details over watercolors that just need the extra oomph. Um, but I saw that they are stocking, they're selling refills. So that was the big downside to those palettes was that if you live in America or if you live outside of probably China and Korea and other countries that use that jelly cup format as kind of standard, um, it's hard to get a refill, and if you get a refill, it's going to be that same brand because otherwise it might not slide into your palette because some have like a rectangle um, cup and some have a like a square, like a like a rounded, a cup with like a rounded edge. Some have like a little cutout on it, so they're all a little bit different. So Maya Company, which is um, one of the bigger makers of those types of palettes, came out with a refill pouch, and I like this style of packaging. I just finished up an acrylic um, pouch like this that was. 
uh, black because I was using it to, I was making my fabric paint to silk screen those shirts. Um, I like it because this type of packaging, it's not a tube. When you squeeze it, air doesn't get back in. So it doesn't, like, it wouldn't really matter with gouache, but like with acrylics, air doesn't get back in like uh, one of those plastic tubes where they're just kind of like the Liquitex Basics. You know how they kind of pop back into their shape um, and air can get in there. Now you could squeeze it out and just kind of cap it up while you're holding the, the bottle squeezed shut um, to eliminate that, but that's kind of not what typically happens, not really usually how you close it because you don't want to accidentally squish out paint where you're doing that. Uh, but these, the paint goes out and then the bag compresses so you don't get air in it. Um, so I thought that was great. This is 100 mLs of gouache, so that would fill up the 30 mL jelly cups over three times. So voting with my dollar, I'm glad they're offering these refills on Amazon. They didn't have all the colors, but I think like if there's if people buy them, I'm sure they'll stock more. They had the, like, probably the most common to use up colors, like they had your primaries, black and white, a brown, that sort of thing. So um, I can, you know what, I'll just go on my orders and I'll link up the things that I, the exact things that I ordered, that way you can, you know, there's so many things that are that are close or the same thing from different sellers. You never know. I think all these things were fulfilled by Amazon. So, um, yeah. So that's not very exciting. Well, except for what I got at Martin's. But I thought I would share that because um, I thought they were kind of interesting and I do have immediate plans for all of them. So I know you don't come here for a haul, but sometimes... Sometimes you get it. I actually had to go into town today to mail a FedEx package. And I'm like, I hate going into town just for one thing because it feels so wasteful. I'm like wasting gas. Isn't there anything else I have to do? But I'd already done groceries this week. And I was like, well, I could spin through the Dollar Tree and see if there's anything good and I can add it to my frug haul and my sat chat. And then I'm like, Lindsay, be responsible. You don't need to do that. You know, <laughs> it, you might not have an exciting haul, but it's authentic and it's stuff you're going to use. So, you know, come on, be authentic. <laughs> Don't do that. I did something actually, um, something that's coming up. I've, it's warm enough over in the, uh, the room of Horde, which is the old studio for me to work over there now. It's like in the sixties. Um, cause it's in the winter. It's usually in the fifties over there. But once you get to the point where it's in the, it's in the sixties, it's uncomfortable enough to work over there. And I've got a huge table where I do big messy projects and also sewing projects. I was just fixing a canvas. I'll have that video up next week, but I had this big canvas and, um, and I had dropped a, like I got an award from Teachable. It was one of those hard, those heavy glass awards, kind of like a soap opera person gets. And I dropped it, and it fell on this canvas, and it left a hole like about the size of a grape in it. And I was so distraught because it was such a big canvas. And I, I have moved this canvas around for like three or four years, probably longer. And I'm like I'm just waiting for inspiration because it's huge canvas. And I put a hole in it. I was so disgusted. Um, so I decided to see if I could patch it. And so I did a video of that and it worked out really well. So that's over on that table right now, just waiting for the paint to dry. Um, but uh, so I'll have a video on how to patch a canvas that you've, you know, either you've bought on clearance and had a hole in it or a tear, or you've done something like me, foolish and torn it yourself or poked a hole in it yourself. So you'll know how to repair those. Um, but I was thinking, man, I can do some big gel printing projects now. I love to get all my, my gel plates out and just make a ton of prints and just have fun with it. So, um, so yeah, I'm kind of, uh, kind of looking forward to that. Um, I did have a couple other, I did have a couple other topics. So for when I do the gel printing, I actually have some fun new stencils to try. Now I, I was kind of saving, opening this up until I was going to do my next, my next gel printing project. But um, I can, I'll just show you a little, a little, I'll show you a little, a little peek. This is from the, um, uh, I want to make sure I say it. PM Artist Studio. I want to say PM because that was the driving school where I got my license, but I'm sure they don't want to be associated with me. <laughs> That's the driving school. And so when I when every time I see your stencil shop, I think PM Driving School. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think all of the uh, I think all of the driver instructors, at least all the ones that I had, I think smoke heavily. <laughs> Oh, I do not. That's one job, man. That's one job that I would not want to have. So I'm going to show you this one because this is, I thought was really cute. There are others and I will use them when I do some gel printing in the future. But uh, this one's called Days Galactic Petticoat and I'm just going to hold it in front of my, my shirt so you can see. Isn't that cute? The cutest doily. But there's also this piece here that I think I could put over and maybe like just so I could so I could color certain areas of it maybe I wonder if that's what it's for so I could like lay that on top and like 
you know, I could do like a color wheel or something like that. Anyway, I thought it was really cute. Uh, she cuts them to order. It's actually a mo mother and, um, and daughter team and they cut the stencils to order so you don't have to worry about them running out, which I really like because it's so frustrating when, when you find some really cool stencils and then like I recommend them and then like, remember that set of 30 stencils that was on Amazon? And, um, I still use a lot. They're right in that bucket actually right there because I use them when I'm doing my quick little gel prints in here. Um, cause I don't have a lot of room in here. So if I'm going to gel print, it's going to be quick and easy. So I would, uh, I recommended those and then they were like sold out in like three hours after a sat chat. And it's so frustrating because you know, you see it and you know, that's useful. That's a great deal. I want it. And then you can't get it. So that's frustrating. So that was my little week of consumerism. Um, I hope you found it entertaining. Uh, I think I'm going to use all of these things. I mean, I, I don't have to refill any white gouache yet, but, um, I've actually, I've actually got a couple little pots over there that are running low. And also I'm thinking about, I have a few of those big jelly gouache palettes that I've reviewed and I'm just trying to figure out how realistically I'm going to use them. So if I do like donate them to the school or something, I'll want to top off the white because that would be a bummer. Here you go. Here's some paint, but no white. I mean, that would just be, that would be a bummer. So that will allow those to be a little more useful. But anyways, I wanted to vote with my dollar because I like it when companies sell refills for things so you don't have to buy a whole other palette. And I think this makes more sense than trying to order a jelly cup and hoping it fits your um, your palette. And not to mention those jelly cups, I would just think they're, cause they're kind of like, you know how yogurt has like the foil tin, the foil seal on it, but like no cover, just the foil seal now. Uh, that's kind of how those are packaged. And I can't imagine those ship terribly well. So, Vote with my dollar. What else can you do, right? That's really all I have this week. Um, I put, had a live stream this week on my uh, on the owl painting. I'll show you that real quick in case you want to catch it. So we did. Uh, this is the one. Oof! I'm gonna turn that down a bit. Uh, so I painted one of these. I painted this one when I was doing a Zoom craft night with my friends last week, and so I'm like, oh, that would be a fun live stream. So this is the one we did on the live stream. So that's on my channel. If you want to check it out, uh, it's there for you to watch for free. I've got to get set up for my Michaels class. I'm actually filming this Thursday night at, um, uh, it's actually 721. I need to change my clock or I am going to be so thrown off all night. <laughs> I can't believe it's like it's Thursday and I still haven't changed my clock. Man, daylight savings time might be permanent though. The Senate, the Senate voted to make daylight savings time permanent, and so if it passes in the House of Representatives, like November 2023, it's just gonna stay daylight savings time, which I'm all for. I'm all for that. I want my light later in the day because the sun comes up very early here on the easternmost point of the country, and uh, and I want some more light in the in the afternoon in the evening. So you let me know what you think about daylight savings time in the comments below or anything else because it's Saturday Chatterday and, and we're here to chat with one another. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful week. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to see my kids in their last high school performance. And um, till next time, happy crafting. Bye.